Here's just a quick little video of the last few problems from the review that we did in class today that we didn't quite get to. Um, question number seven here, sketch the region enclosed by the given curves. All right, so I'm going to do that first. Um, I'm probably going to do this y equals x first. That kind of looks like a, the easiest thing I could do. Um, and let's see, we have this guy here. He's going to kind of come up and down like so. And then we have the y equals x minus 2 squared. This is a parabola. It opens up. And this x minus 2 means it's your parent function moved to the right 2. So instead of crossing at 0, 0, it's crossing over here. Um, and it opens up. So I go ahead and graph it like so. And from that, you can already see that there is this section right in here that's bounded by the two curves. It says decide whether to integrate with respect to x or y. Well, I will integrate with respect to x because the blue is on top of the red. It's very easy to see this way. If I would turn it, the red would be on top and part of the bottom. Blue would be on part of the bottom, so I don't want it that way. Draw the typical approximating rectangle. You don't really have to do that. I'm not going to ask you for that on the test. And then find the area of the region. All right, so the area of the region is I have to know where these intersect, which I can see that they do intersect here when x is 1. But what I can't tell is where they intersect right there. So what I could do is I could take and say, where does x minus 2 squared equal x? I would FOIL this left side out, x squared minus 4x plus 4 equals x. Subtract x from both sides, x squared minus 4x. Oh, no, subtract that x over, it's going to give me minus 5x plus 4 equals 0. And then factor. And let's see, x minus 1 and x minus 4. And setting it equal to 0, x equals 1 and 4. So I could see that they were crossing at 1. What I couldn't see is what this value here was. So we now have from 1 to 4. And we're going to have the line minus the parabola. So x minus, and then I do want parentheses around this, and dx. Now rather than put x minus 2 squared, I'm going to go ahead and put what its squared is. x squared minus 4x plus 4. Distributing the negative here, I end up getting negative x squared plus 5x plus 1x, or 4x plus 1x is 5x, and then minus 4 dx from 1 to 4. And then from there, I'm going to go ahead and find the antiderivative. So negative x cubed over 3 plus 5x squared over 2 minus 4x evaluated from 1 to 4. From here, we have our top minus bottom. And unfortunately, one of those numbers is not 0, so I do have to do the work um, going forth with it. 4 cubed is 64, so there's negative 64 thirds. 4 squared is 16, but 16 divided by 2 is 8, and 8 times 5 is 40. And then 4 times 4 is 16. And then plugging the 1 in, I get negative 1 third plus 5 halves minus 4. All right, so let's see. Here I have 64 thirds minus negative 1 third, which is 64 thirds plus 1 third, or negative 63 thirds or negative 21 for those two numbers. The 40 minus 24, that's going to, or minus 16 is plus 24. I'm giving you the answers ahead of time. And then minus 5 halves and plus 4 when I distribute that negative. 24 plus 4 is 28 minus 5 halves. And let's see, when I add these together, I get 7 minus 5 halves. So that's 14 halves minus 5 halves, which comes out to 9 halves or 4.5. Either answer there would be correct. All right, so that was number 7. Next one here, we have evaluate this integral. And looking at this, it looks like the derivative of the, of the bottom does come out to be the top in a sort of way. u is x squared minus 4. So when I take the derivative, I get 2x dx, which only the x dx is over here. Um, so I can multiply both sides by 1 half. 1 half du equals x dx. So I'm going to rewrite this. In place of the x and the dx, I'm going to put the 1 half du. In place of the x squared minus 4, I'm going to put the u. 
course, it's in the denominator, like so. Now, again, the mistake that I, I really um, stressed in class today was that some of you just pulled the 1 and the 10 down on this on your take-home quiz. I will mark points off, I promise you. You cannot use the 1 and the 10 on your new integral because your new integral has used, it does not have x's. So right here, you have to convert this into use. So you take and you plug the 10 in for that x squared. 10 squared is 100 minus 4, which is 96. And then plug the 1 in, that's 1 minus 4, which is negative 3. So we have so from negative 3 to 96. All right, then from there we find the antiderivative, which is 1 half natural log of absolute value of u, evaluated from negative 3 to 96. And then from there, let's see. We can say 1 half, leave that out front, and do top minus bottom. That gives me natural log of 96 minus natural log of 3. Notice I applied the absolute values to the negative 3 to change that to positive 3. Now, you do have some logarithm properties. Let's say if you have subtraction between two logarithms, you can change that to division. Of course, your 1 half is going to remain out front. Now, 96 divided by 3 is 32. And then also remember that if you have a 1 half out front, it can fly up to the exponent. So this is the natural log of square root of 32. Well, you know that 32 is 16 times 2, and the square root of 16 is 4. So natural log of 4 red 2. This would be the most simplified answer for that problem. I do understand that you can get the right answer if you take and plug this u back in here and then use the 1 and the 10 in place of those. But it's this line right here that if you have the 1 and the 10 written there, it is not correct. All right, so you could plug that back in, but it's actually usually easier to not plug it back into you, just use the numbers there instead. Okay, the next problem. Sketch the region enclosed by the given curves and find its area. All right, so first of all, um, this particular problem, you should know the graphs of tangent. Tangent does something like this and this. Now, if that is my graph, that means this right here is x equals pi over 2, and this over here is x equals negative pi over 2. Truly, they only asked me to graph it from negative pi over 3 to positive pi over 3. So truly, it's only going from there to, you know, say there. So only that piece of it in between those. But that's okay. All right, the next thing is to graph 2 sine of x. Well, we know that the graph of sine of x does something like this. But where's pi over 3? Well, here's pi over 2, and here is negative pi over 2. So pi over 3 is in here and in here. And also, it goes up to 2 and down to negative 2. Okay? So when we do that right there, and we graph our up to 2, down to negative 2, and we start graphing our, our sine function, it kind of does something like this and like that. So really, truly, if I was drawing this to scale, this piece here and this piece here are actually supposed to be the same, okay? But my human error, of course, they're not exactly the same. If all I was doing was taking and evaluating the integral from negative pi over 3 to positive pi over 3 of whatever the function is in here, it would come out zero because what's below the x-axis and above the x-axis cancels with one another. Okay, but for this one right here, it does use the word area. And so because it uses the word area, I really do um, have to find what both of them are as positive. So what I could do is I could say, let's just look from zero to pi over three, and then let's double it. Okay. Now, looking only at this part from 0 to pi over 3, I have the sine curve on top, and I have the tangent curve on the bottom. So I have, for that right there, 
2 sine of x minus tangent of x dx. This one here can get a little bit sticky in what is to come here. So, I mean, you could even distribute the 2 to both of them if you want. That's totally up to you. I am going to leave my 2 out front, but I don't want to forget about it. Okay. Now, I start by finding the antiderivative of 2 sine of x, which is negative 2 cosine of x. But when I go to find my antiderivative of tangent of x, I don't know that. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take and I'm going to kind of separate these as the integral from 0 to pi over 3 of 2 sine x dx minus the integral from 0 to pi over 3 of tangent x dx. So looking at my first one, the antiderivative, like we said, was negative 2 cosine x evaluated from 0 to pi over 3. Then from there, I'm going to do top minus bottom. Okay, plugging the pi over 3 in, I have negative 2 cosine of pi over 3, which is 1 half. And then plugging the 0 in, I get negative 2 times cosine of 0, which is 1. And so this right here is negative 1 plus 2, or 1. Okay, now mind you, that 2 is still out front there, and I still have to add on whatever happens with this piece on this, on this side over here. So let me kind of switch colors so that you can kind of see it as it unfolds. All right. I have this negative out front, and then I have this tangent. I don't know the antiderivative. But what I could do is I could rewrite it as sine of x over cosine of x dx. And then I could let u be cosine of x, the guy in the most uncomfortable spot. The derivative of u then is negative sine of x dx. So then I could rewrite this minus comes down, and then in place of the sine x dx, oh look, I have a sine x dx, but it's negative, so I need a negative du equals sine x dx. So in place of the sine x dx, I'm putting a negative and a du. The two negatives out here are going to end up becoming a positive. In place of the cosine, I have a u, and then I just have a 1 on the top holding it down. Now again, I cannot use this 0 and pi over 3. I have to plug them in here. Cosine of pi over 3 is 1 half, and cosine of 0 is 1. So I have from 1 to 1 half. You do not have to flip that or worry about it in any way. Then we have the natural log of absolute value of u evaluated from 1 to 1 half. So I have the natural log of 1 half minus the natural log of 1 which the natural log of 1 is 0. So this part here results in the natural log of 1 half. Now I need to take that back up here. And we get that. Now we distribute the 2. We get 2 plus 2 natural log of 1 half. That is a correct answer. Also 2 plus natural log of, of 1 half squared, or maybe I'm just going to say 1 fourth, where if I pull that up to the exponent, and that answer would be totally fine. Okay. All right. So for that one there, because they did use the word area, I do actually have to find it, but I don't have to do it as two integrals. I could do it as one. You do see down here that it does end up splitting into two integrals, but that's all right. Next one, I did leave a dx off right here at the end. It says find k if k is greater than 0 and the integral from 5 to k of 6 plus x dx equals 75 halves. So they're telling me the answer. I now just have to find what k is. So what I could do is find the antiderivative 6x plus x squared over 2 evaluated from 5 to k is going to equal 75 halves. Remember to get rid of this part here I have to do top minus bottom. And that is going to end up equaling 75 halves. So let's see, plugging the k in, I have 6k plus k squared over 2. Plugging the 5 in, I have 30 plus 25 halves. 
So this is 6k plus k squared over 2 minus 30 minus 25 halves equals 75 halves. So now it becomes algebra. Subtract 75 halves from both sides. This gives me negative 30 minus 50. Because negative 25 halves and negative 75 halves is negative 100 halves, and negative 100 divided by 2 is negative 50. So that gives me negative 80 for that. I'm going to just switch these around. k squared over 2 plus 6k and equals 0 since there's nothing left on the other side. From here, I want to factor this. I personally do not like factoring anything that has a fraction there with the k. Um, so I'm going to multiply both sides here by 2 in order to get rid of the fraction. Again, just an algebraic move that you learned back in algebra that if you have fractions, multiply by the denominator to get rid of the fraction. Then from here, it looks a lot easier to factor. We get k squared breaks up into k and k. Factors of negative 160 that give me 12 would be positive 20 and negative 8. And when I set them equal to 0, I get k is negative 20 and positive 8. Now you might remember the statement at the beginning. They said k is greater than 0. That means k cannot be the negative 20. For this answer, if k is 8, then that integral comes out to 75 halves. All right, and then the last one. Sketch the region enclosed by the curves. Okay, so let's see. I have sine of x goes up to 1, goes down to negative 1. It goes something like this. They said I only care about from x equals pi over 2 to pi, where pi over 2 is right here and pi is right here. So the only part of the graph that I'm really concerned about is this part right here. Now think about what this point is. This is the point pi over 2, which pi divided by 2 is 1.57, and then the y value is 1. So next when I have to graph this graph, y equals x, it includes the point 1, 1. So that means I'm only going over this far and going like up to here. That's the point 1, 1. And it kind of comes up like so. So between the black and the red is what we're talking about right there. From here to here. That is the shaded region. So we could say the integral from pi over 2 to pi of the line, which is x, minus the trig function, dx. You know the antiderivative of this. It's x squared over 2 plus cosine of x evaluated from pi over 2 to pi. And then we have top minus bottom. Plugging the pi in, I get pi squared over 2 plus cosine of pi, which is negative 1. And then I have pi over 2 squared over 2 plus cosine of pi over 2, which is 0. So this is pi squared over 2 minus 1. This here ends up giving me minus pi squared over 4 over 2, which is over 8, and then minus 0. And then I guess I could probably combine these together if I get a common denominator. Multiply this one by 4 on the top and bottom. So 4 pi squared minus 1 pi squared is 3 pi squared over 8, and then minus 1. So hopefully that helps you on those last few problems there. Have a great day, everybody.